Hey guys, this is Emilio Ramos with Red Grace Media. On this video, we're gonna tackle the issue of Islam. One of the things I've done for many years is go to a college campus, share the gospel with students, and Islam is always one of those subjects you don't wanna miss. I bring my Quran every week as an illustration that you are in the conflict of worldviews and that you don't have the time you think you have because there's a battle going on for your soul and for your mind. Islam is exhibit A. Did you know, let me give you some statistics and see if, what you think. Did you know that Texas has over 250,000 Muslims already? Did you know that Texas leads the nation in mosque construction? Did you know that in the city of Plano, we had officials in the city council that were also members of ISIS? Did you know that in Garland, two ISIS operatives tried to attempted to assassinate a woman by the name of Pamela Geller, and they were shot and killed by a security officer? Did you know that about what's going on in America? Did you know that right here at UNT, <clears throat> the MSA, Muslim Student Association, that no longer will even communicate with me because they know that I expose them. <laughs> you know that the MSA here on campus has more chapters in universities across America than Republicans and Democrats combined. Did you know that in America today, Islamic infiltration and propaganda, the Muslims around the world are putting money into evangelizing the West at an alarming rate. The biggest Christian denomination is what? The Southern Baptist. The Southern Baptist gives millions of dollars for missions all around the world, missionaries. What the Southern Baptists do in one year, Islam does in one day in terms of Western infiltration. Back in 2000, year 2000, I was in London, right by Big Ben, doing evangelism at night. Surrounding the downtown area there were table after table after table after table of Muslim dawah evangelism. 24-7 Muslim evangelism. Qurans being handed out, pamphlets being handed out, 24-7, never stops, even to today. You know that in the next couple decades, the UK will no longer be the UK based on the birth rate and immigration in the next, some, some say in the next 25 to 30 years, the UK will be predominantly Muslim. Do you understand that your world is changing right before your eyes and you don't even know it because you're too busy on your iPhone? You're too busy watching, you know, whatever, the MTV Awards, or whatever it is that kids watch these days. <laughs> you understand that not every worldview is created equal? You know, it's funny, I get ladies that say, why are you attacking Islam? When I'm thinking, do you understand that under Sharia, you can't even dress the way you're dressed. You're having fun walking around UNT with tiny little shorts, and in a Muslim nation, you could be beaten in public for doing yeah, that. But look how you have in London, there are areas, neighborhoods, entire neighborhoods, where women, European women, are not even willing to go in the neighborhoods. Why? Because the Muslim gangs have modesty police that will go into the streets and if a woman is not dressed properly, she could be assaulted. 
Not all worldviews are created equal, everybody. This is where postmodernism runs out, right here. The idea that, hey, don't judge anybody. You'll find out really quick what happens with postmodernism. Once everybody is free to stipulate their own worldview, then guess what? Islam is allowed to advance their worldview. And guess what happens under Sharia? Under Sharia law, first of all, do you know that in Minnesota, the Somali population, which is now in the hundreds of thousands, the Somali population wants Sharia law over American law. I used to live in that neighborhood. He used to live in that neighborhood. Well, I've done, I've done evangelism in that neighborhood. And do you know what Sharia law teaches? Sharia law teaches that if you're not Muslim, you have to pay the jizya tax. We all need to be taxed for not being Muslim. And in order to be able to live in a Muslim nation or country as a non-Muslim, you, you have to pay a special this tax is have to wait. This is just have to, to wait. survive, to be protected. Like this, okay? That's part of Sharia law. Another part of Sharia law is that a man is allowed to marry four women. Women, of course, cannot marry four men. Oh, no, but you're not supposed to wear it. Under Sharia law, even Muhammad himself would throw homosexuals off a cliff or off a tall building. Capital punishment for homosexuals. Things like that. Under Sharia law, a woman does not have the right to claim rape. Unless she has several eyewitnesses, she will not be heard in court. Why do you think Saudi Arabia for so long had a ban? Women cannot leave a house without a written permission from their husband. They're not allowed to vote and they're not allowed to drive. They're barely just now allowing women to do that. In Iran, the mullahs have modesty police. I've watched video after video of this. The modesty police are going out into society. If a woman is showing her ankles, they will beat her with batons. There are consequences to ideas, folks. And just like postmodernism, Islam comes with consequences. Do I want Islam to spread in the West? Absolutely not. Number one, because it's false. Number two, because it is oppressive. I think Islam is the greatest threat to humanity, and I think that secular humanism is the greatest threat to a culture.